Hey folks, it's Mike. Uh, it's it's the middle of January, and uh, being the middle of January, I don't really want to be outside because I don't want to get cold. So sue me. So what I figured I'd do is uh, stay in the office and uh, show off, you know, some photos and sort of what inspired me to to take those photos and uh, sort of my general inspirational sort of process that kind of goes on in there. Um, so yeah, um, I will say that uh, there are sort of three ways that I, I can sort of get inspired with my photos. Uh, the first way is to um, actually uh, go out and take photos and a lot of times it's, it'll be basically um, sort of uh, just spur of the moment kind of thing where I'll see something and go, that's cool, that's neat, I want to take a photo of that. Um, or um, I've got something in my mind, like, say, for example, um, back in uh, April of last year, uh, I you know, worked with uh, some photographers and, and, uh, and models at, uh, at a studio and uh, saw a pair of wings uh, hanging on a wall and said, hey, I want to use that on a particular model. So I did, and you know, uh, the results are as you will see, trust me. Um, second, uh, second way is to, um, is, you know, when I uh, may not necessarily have anything specific in mind when I photo, uh, take a photo, I'll, uh, you know, take it in a light room and Photoshop and go, hmm, what if I try this? and maybe that, sort of do some other stuff with it. And, you know, the photo, photo will uh, turn out a lot better than, you know, uh, what I initially had in mind for it, even when I was photographing it. Um, the third sort of way is uh, when I post it uh, online, either to uh, my Facebook page or Instagram or uh, sometimes Twitter and uh, now my website where, um, I, you know, I'll, uh, I'll just create a little story uh, to go along with the photo and, uh, and you know, go from there essentially. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, uh, let's get to it. Uh, what sort of uh, inspired this uh, this video was, well, I mean, other than the fact that it's cold outside and it's January and I don't want to be outside right now, uh, is a recent visit to the uh, Royal Aviation Museum of Western Canada, uh, right out uh, at uh, the airport here in Winnipeg. Um, it, you know, it was a uh, a night where they invited photographers to uh, to come out and uh, take photos of the uh, various displays uh, in the museum, and. Uh, as you sort of see right there, and which I'll probably just post in a bigger space right about here somewhere, um, you'll see a, a photo that it uh, that I took of the uh, the CF-104 Starfighter that they've got in the museum. Um, it's a beautiful plane, and with um, the the lights uh, that they had on and some turned off. I really liked sort of the way that the the light was falling on the uh, the starfighter and and uh, you know kind of used that light and lack of light to my advantage to to create uh, create this photo and uh, so yeah I mean uh, it kind of spurred me to go through some uh, some of my other photos uh, both you know recent and. Uh, even further back, going back to probably about 2019, um, just to give you an idea of sort of what inspired some of these photos. So, uh, when I uh, when I take photos, um, you know, I certainly uh, do follow the a lot of the compositional rules, um, things like rules of thirds, patterns, uh, interesting shapes. Um, you know, etc. Um, like, say, for example, with uh, this photo here of uh, the uh, these trains uh, in the middle of summer, 
Um, we had uh, forest fires going on, you know, north uh, in northern parts of the province, and uh, I think from out out west as well. So it created a really nice sort of uh, orange red light on uh, on these train cars. Um, and you know, as you can see with uh, with all these train cars, they sort of um, you know the the perspective is you basically go from uh, you know inward like that uh plus you also see the uh the shapes of the uh of the fencing that's uh around uh the top of the bridge and uh you know and and say for example there's this uh this other photo from uh, a um a building uh, in the exchange district where it's sort of, sort of nice um I'm not entirely sure what kind of shape it is, but basically it's a nice shape where it repeats and, you know, it, it really gives it a nice, uh, nice look. Um, you know, and then other photos, uh, especially with, with photos of, of cars, I really do like um, trying to find interesting shapes and angles and curves. Uh, instead of just sort of you taking your traditional three-quarter view, uh, you know, from the front or from the back or up high or up low or whatever, um, I want to find interesting things. Like, for example, with this uh, 57 uh, Thunderbird uh, coupe, um, I liked how you could see or sort of see through the uh, the porthole window into the uh, the steering wheel uh, that's, uh, you know, on the driver's side there. It's... I really like that. I've actually taken a photo of, of this car a few times. Um, this particular edit, I think, is probably my favorite. Also, um, outside of you know interesting shapes, um, you've got, uh, say, for example, this photo of uh, the model that I took back in uh, April of, uh, of last year. Um, you know, I saw the uh, the wings, had her put them on you know, had her stand on this nice, uh, this backdrop, and um, I kind of wanted to give it a, uh, like a 1930s, 1940s Hollywood uh, glamour look to it, um, you know, and yeah, I really like how this one turned out, um, along with some of the other photos uh, of her uh, in this style. Um, you know, and, and other things that sort of inspire me are just, you know, particular light. Um, a lot of times it's sunsets, not sunrises, because I don't typically get up early for those. Um, although I probably should, just because sometimes they look really nice. But, I mean, uh, like, you know, some of my favorite sunset photos are, let's say, this one of Victoria Beach from, uh, again, 2020. Um, really liked how the uh, the light was sort of falling uh, on uh, on the lake, and saw these two uh, seagulls uh, perched on rocks, and uh, kind of went with it. Um, you know, and uh, another one with uh, this one at Buns Creek, where beautiful light. Um, in fact, with this one in particular, uh, you know, it was sort of my wife were there at the park uh, and we got to sort of the point where we we're like okay well let's go home um, and I turned around saw this site and went I need to take some photos because that's much better than everything else I was taking that evening <sighs> but yeah I mean there's all sorts of things sort of inspire me um, Lot of, lots of crazy ideas get in this head, whether planned uh, well ahead of time, like, you know, typically the, the Northern Lights photos that I take, because I kind of have to plan for those ones, because you can't just go out and go, hey, they're the Northern... No, they're not there. But yeah, uh, and, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of just being there, right, you know, in the right place at the right time, like this, this photo from Bruns, Bruns Creek. Bruns, whatever. Uh, so yeah, um, and uh, one of the things I also kind of like playing with is uh, some long exposures. Um, with say, for example, this photo uh, that I took of uh, a light tunnel, essentially that was created for Louis Blanche back in 2019. I want to say it was. Um, I'm probably right. Probably.
<laughs> Whatever. Um, you know, I basically uh, took a, a few second exposure where I was walking down this, uh, this light tunnel and shaking the camera about a little bit, um, just to give you this, this, this effect. Um, and uh, from sort of that same night, I think it was the same night, um, where um, this, it's technically called a warming hut. Um, don't worry about the origins of it. I'll, I might explain it in a future video, or I think I may have explained it in a past video. I don't remember. But uh, again, this is a matter of taking a long exposure. Um, you know, as you can see, the, uh, the streaks at the bottom there kind of give it away. Um, and, you know, trying to hold the camera steady uh, with one hand while you're trying to rotate around in this particular warming hut gives you a bit of a blurred effect, which I really like how it turned out. Also, with some of the photos that I uh, that I, I do take, um, that I do sort of, you know, get into the situation go, it sort of reminds me of such and such, whatever. And I will say that uh, a lot of the photos that I, I take don't always turn out the way I think they turn out in my head, which is fine. Um, I'm, I'm, I think, I, I feel like I'm getting it to the point where, um, yes, I'll have misses, but they're misses that aren't too bad. Um, you know, I still do take some awful photos, which, you know, don't see the light of day. Uh, typically, we'll just delete them when I uh, uh, copy them over to my computer and take a look at them in Lightroom. <laughs> but uh, for the most part, the, the photos that you see are the ones I'm, you know, very proud of. Uh, moving on to the uh, the second way, um, which is uh, post processing, uh, i.e., editing the photo in uh, in my choice of software, which is uh, Adobe Lightroom and uh, Adobe Photoshop. Um, there there have been some photos where you know I've I've sort of had something in mind, but you know uh, you know if I went with like a, a traditional edit to the photo, it turn it'll be okay, but you know, I've, I've had some, some images where I'm like, let's give it this sort of edit just to see kind of how it looks and, you know, see, play around with things. Um, like, for example, with uh, my photos from last summer at, uh, out in the white shell, um, I was sort of inspired to give it a bit of a, uh, a, an old-ish time, like 1970s, early 1980s, uh, look and feel to them um, because I was also inspired by, by a, a photo that I saw on uh, on Reddit um, where it had tons of you know uh, browns and greens and yellows sort of you know colors you associate with the 1970s uh, and uh, sort of with the look of those photos so you know I created a uh, a preset in uh, in Lightroom and uh, just to sort of really play with that look, and I'm very happy with how how some of those photos really turned out. Um, now, like traditionally, I mean, if I threw on just like a you know a basic black and white or a basic color edit to it, they look okay. But I kind of wanted to jazz it up, so I kind of I, I kind of did. Um, there's also uh, a, um, a, an edit uh, that, uh, that I've also come up with for some other photos, um, typically more urban photos where I wanted to give it kind of a sort of a futuristic look to them, um, kind of along the lines of what you've probably seen with some of the, um, you know, sort of futuristic photos you've seen uh, online, but I've got, I, I've, I've actually sort of taken a little bit further with the, with the blues and with a little bit more uh, texture to it, uh, just to give it some extra crunchiness. And uh, I'm kind of happy with those as well. Um, so yeah, you know, and, and of course with some of the, uh, the black and white ones with like, like going back to the, the example with the, uh, the Starfighter, um, 
I really like that as a black and white color would have been fine, but the black and white, I think, gives it extra punch. Um, I, I think because of the, the lack of color. Uh, so, yeah, and just the way things go, you know. Like, starting off with a pretty simple example here where um, I've, you know, took a photo of this, uh, this particular model. Um, was there with a few other photographer friends and uh, this, 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 this model, great guy, um, you know, had him sort of run up the wall and sort of like a bit of a like superhero kind of uh, pose. And, uh, you know, I'd, uh, I, I figured I'd, I'd add a little bit of uh, color to the eyes uh, just to sort of, you know, give it a, a bit of a different look to it just to, you know, because, I mean, without it, it was basically just sort of blackness. You really didn't see a lot. Um, you know, and, and punched up the colors a little bit uh, just to uh, just to make it look, uh, you know, a bit more comic book-like. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but, um, you know, moving on to, say, this photo here. Uh, this photo was taken in the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. Um, these are essentially all walkways uh, that lead you up through the various different uh, levels in the building. And, uh, you know, the, um, the, uh, with what you're seeing here in blue, it's not the way that you actually see it in the museum. In the museum, it's more of a orange-yellow light that you're seeing. Um, but I wanted to give it sort of that futuristic look that uh, that I think I showed in uh, the previous section. Um, it just give it, yeah, a futuristic look to it. Um, and I'll actually discuss this photo a little bit in the next segment. And, uh, you know, a lot of the ed editing that I do like to do, I do kind of like to punch up the colors a little bit. Um, I'm getting more away from oversaturating photos. It's it's a more selective with uh, with how I uh, color um, my photos, um, and uh, yeah. Going back to uh, this photo of uh, the abandoned barn uh, out in the middle of nowhere, um, in terms of editing it. Um, you know, I, I definitely wanted to sort of um, bring out uh, the barn. You know, I, I didn't want the barn to be like too dark, so I, you know, basically brought up the exposure on it um, to at least give you an idea of what you're looking at. Um, and with uh, with the stars themselves. I believe this was a 10 second exposure. I don't believe it was actually a stacked photo. I don't believe. Although I do have, excuse me, I have actually stacked uh, star photos before. Um, like one of, uh, say this, this Milky Way photo where it's a stack of like 20 uh, photos of the stars plus three of the uh, the foreground, you know, the, the ground, the, um, the various different uh, trees and whatever uh, that you see in the photo. Um, or this other photo that I took at uh, Pinoa Dam a few years ago where um, it was a stack of... I can't remember how many photos of the stars. I don't think it, it could have just been one. Um, but with uh, the foreground there, you'll see this, you know, sort of mysterious colored light in the foreground. That was done with like a uh, like a foam light baton that I got at uh, a dollar store and just kind of ran around a few times uh, trying not to trip on anything because uh, if I trip on anything my wife will hurt me and I don't get hurt by my wife. Besides, I'm the driver. Uh, d d yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, with the uh, the foreground, I think it ended up being a stack of about uh, again three photos. Um, there's this other other one of, uh, from Pinawa Dam where um, I actually had to light parts of the the foreground in several different shots, um, along with I think it was 15 of the stars, just to get sort of the uh, what I wanted for the Milky Way, reduce noise. That's kind of the main reason I stack photos uh, um, at night, mainly, uh, is to get rid of all the 
all the noise that you would see in a single shot. Uh, so yeah. And with the uh, the third way, um, I uh, it you know it's about posting it online because that's kind of what a lot of people and a lot of photographers do nowadays is to post on you know the popular social media, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, sometimes Twitter, sometimes Threads, sometimes TikTok, which I don't do because I think I'm too old for that. I I, I couldn't see myself doing that. But, uh, and of course my website, um, msmith-photography.com. Why not promote it? Because I got it. Um, so, yeah, and, and when it comes to posting photos online, I, I mean, like uh, most photographers that I see, just give a, a basic description of, you know, I shot this photo here um, and, you know, on this 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 date or this location. Um, so, you know, some pretty basic information about, uh, about the photo, which is always handy. But I kind of want to take that to uh, that next step where I kind of want to get you really involved with the photo that uh, that I present, um, whether I give you a story that's, you know, somewhat emotional and uh, you know somewhat uh, involved, or something that just ends up being uh, quite uh, quite humorous, which you know I like doing. What can I say? Um, you know, whether it's you know, as I say, it's uh, whether it's um, you know a story with like the Starfighter photo, where um, you know it's 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 basically about a, a pilot who's you know last visit with uh, with the plane that he'd flown for so long, and uh, you know his his uh, sort of tribute to it, um, or some of the you know humorous posts that I've uh, I've made where. Say, for example, uh, a bird's stolen my, my camera um, and I'm going to go chase it and I end up falling in the snow and that kind of thing. Um, I've, I've, you know, and I'll probably uh, post uh, some of those stories uh, in this video just to give you uh, a flavor of, uh, of how I think and, 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 and do things. Because this, 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 yeah, this, this, this big egg needs to, uh, needs to breathe. What can I say?
Anyway, on that note, um, I'm going to uh, end the video. Um, I'm going to go play some games. Um, and so uh, at this point, uh, I'll uh, say ciao and uh, do the usual like, comment, subscribe, and uh, see you next time.